I'm going to present on, a, it's called a mega tree. I'm big into uh, trying to do automation, Halloween, Christmas, etc. And I'll show you what a mega tree here is in a second. Uh, but since this is my first uh, official meeting at Nova Hackers, I figured I'd present, aka the rules say I should do so. Um, so some information about me, since you guys have probably never seen me in your life. Uh, my name's Todd Reese. I go by Tech Rat. I uh, got an engineering, electrical engineering degree from Penn State back in 96. Um, pretty much do everything in Linux for my back end. I like Windows for the front end just because it makes my life easier and I don't have to recompile my kernel every time my graphics driver change. Um, you know, database, networking, hobbies, geocaching, rollerblading, Halloween projects, etc. cetera. Uh, so Megatree, it's basically a big metal pole with lots of lights sticking down, but I'm not okay with just having the lights turn on. I want them to do things. So I started researching lighting control boards and Lightarama is probably the premier vendor for these boards. It'll handle up to 20 amps on a side. Each channel is, can support up to 10 amps. People have hundreds, not maybe hundreds, but I've seen installs of 20 to 30 of these and they actually have 400 amp panels put into their garage in order to run their Christmas displays. <laughs> I am running LED lights, so I'm only 4.8 watts a strand, so <laughs> even if I turn them all on, I can still run this for less than my hair dryer. Um, the, uh, the board itself supports two different lighting protocols, Lightarama, which is a proprietary from the company who makes the board, and they also support DMX512, which is kind of an industry standard lighting protocol. Uh, I found this uh, USB to DMX512 converter, and it turns out there's Raspberry Pi drivers for it. So I'm like, all right, now we're on the right track. So then I said, I've got a board, the controller, now how can I talk to it? So um, I wanted the tree to be standalone. I don't want this thing to be tethered to a laptop in my house and cables and cords. So the intent is it's going to run in my yard freestanding. So I hooked it up with a Raspberry Pi, uh, did a Wi-Fi adapter acting as a hotspot with the intent that somebody could walk off their, hot, their iPhone, iPad, smartphone, control the tree, change the speed, change the programming, etc. And then, of course, I needed a way to break out that board into a whole bunch of outlets. So, started with a big sheet of plexiglass and 16 outlets that are muxed into an A and a B channel and all the lighting hardware. And if you didn't see me carry it in, I did bring it. It's over on the counter over there and I'm willing to fire it up if you want to see it go because it will run standalone all by itself. You got that certified by the county, right? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even an enclosure, so when I do plug it in, please don't touch it because it is live. <laughs> Uh, software, there turns out to be this open lighting architecture um, suite of software and they actually make a distro for Raspberry Pi. You burn it onto the SD card just like the previous presenter described. Um, they basically support a lot of different protocols but you can basically use it as an Ethernet to DMX converter um, and you can have it convert between one protocol and the other. In that software suite, I found that they had a, a way to record and play back DMX protocol. So I'm like, all right, it seems like I should be able to tie into that. So I ended up just setting up a, uh, a FIFO on the file system, tell their uh, playback software to listen to the FIFO, and I started writing Perl code to write to the FIFO on the other end. And it turns out the protocol is literally just a universe number from 1 to N and a comma delimited list of intensities for every channel you want lit. So in my case, I just output one comma and the intensities from 0 to 255 for 16 bits worth, and e that's each of the channels. Um, so I wrote most of this over the weekend, <laughs> so it's still a work in progress. Uh, but I've got you know single strand where I can go counterclockwise or counterclockwise. Uh, ping pong, you give it a strand number and it'll ping pong around to that strand. Uh, dimmer, you can change the value of it. Call it night rider if you want to just ping back and forth between strings two and ten. You just give it two and ten and it just bounces back and forth. I uh, plan to use it for Halloween. I've got a set of eight. Uh, milk jugs with lights in them. I'm going to put down the driveway. I'm just going to let the lights go up and down and up and down. Uh, and then Comet was one my uh, coworkers came up with, which is like two bright strands and a dimming tail, and the whole thing goes around. At least is the intent. It doesn't quite look as pretty as I was expecting it to. Uh, and then the design, it's going to be a you know, metal pole, 10 to 12 foot tall. I've got the 16 green LED strands that will build excuse me, from the top. And then the control box, which I got to still get some kind of metal enclosure to make it so I don't kill somebody in my front yard. <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> 
So last night was the first time I've actually fired the board up. So I basically just threw the lights over the uh, balcony in my house and started letting the right lights run. I'm guessing my neighbors thought I was crazy, but I'm like, I don't care. Um, it's a little hard to see. Uh, so this is basically ping-ponging back and forth between two different strands. I'm hoping it'll look a lot prettier when it's in tree form, but you can at least get the idea. And then here in a second, it should go to comet mode, which should be two bright strands. And I think I've got three strands that dim, you know, 33% down to zero as it goes around the circle. And then it goes back to the normal mode, and I started decreasing the delay. Right now, it's about a 200 millisecond delay between strands. I can get it down to about 8 milliseconds before it freaks out, but 8 milliseconds is really hauling. <laughs> What freaks out? Does the hardware lock up? Or? I'm not sure if it's me writing to the FIFO, their, their stuff reading it back. It just it seems to lock up when I get down to you know less than eight milliseconds. But even 40 is still roughly 20 to 30 frames a second. So, yeah. so I think it's when it gets to the fastest thing, it was 25 millisecond delay. But. So this is about where my neighbors would start killing me, but. <laughs> so that's what I've got. <laughs> Let's see it. Wait, let's see so what's actually happening? So there's a Raspberry Pi that's got the Perl code and all the, the OLA on it and then it's controlling this little USB to DMX, and then the DMX goes into the one board who controls the lighting logic. And all the 16 channels here go through a set of relays that I can then box so I get an A and a B output. So if I do red and green lights, I can't necessarily do red and green at the same time, but I can do one or the other. So right now it's, it's, it's running in a circle. The only thing I had handy were these little night lights, so they don't really light up very oh, bright. Okay. But it is can you, through. Can the lights go? Hey, turn the lights off. Can you kill the lights for a second? Uh, sure. Can yeah, you hold it up? Or hold it up. Is it safe? Yeah, if I grab the plexi. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, there you go. All right. <laughs> Get the eggnog, quick. <laughs> All right, cool. Good job.